Jesus Christ is no small or insignificant moment in time. It is our life source, our beginning, middle and end. Our promise, hope, endurance and salvation. The breath we breathe, the leading role in our testimony, the witness in our spirit and the cornerstone of our faith. The wondrous day Jesus Christ was born is the day we received hope, unrestricted access to God, an invitation into a relationship with the creator of the universe. This is the story of the biggest and most spectacular event in history. Come on, there's a way. And his name is Jesus Christ. God is looking for a difference maker. God is looking for a history maker. God is looking for somebody that will stand tall. Why does the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ have such power? Evangelist Tamron Clintworth founder of In His Name Ministries, an organization dedicated to both winning the lost and equipping people for the supreme task of soul winning, delves deep into scripture in her new book, declaring and exploring the truths that support the blood, sacrifice, suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and what this truly means to mankind. He wants you desperately and yearns for you relentlessly. But the decision to accept his love for you is yours and yours alone. To find out more, get Why Christ Died today. with the very best. Example, leader, mentor, pastor, spiritual father. Today, we celebrate Pastor Ad Borshoff's spiritual birthday. 39 years ago, Pastor Ad said yes to Jesus, and since then has been plundering hell 
and populate in heaven. Pastor, your track record over the past 39 years inspires us to dream bigger and do more things for God. Thank you, Pastor, for your faithfulness, strong leadership, and showing us to never despise the days of small beginnings. Our lives, our families, our businesses are blessed because of what we have learned from you, Pastor. Millions of people all over the world have been impacted by your obedience to God's call upon your life. We love and honor you, Pastor. And today, we celebrate this very special day with you. Pushing off the limits in this moment. I feel your spirit moving all around me. Come and have your way. We're seeing those dry bones. I'm looking at the dry bones. We're reviving the faith inside of my soul. You're igniting. You're calling me to levels that are higher. I can see your face.
praise you tonight because you're a good and faithful God. If you need prayer for anything, there are pastors and leaders waiting online to meet with you, to pray with you. God is, will answer your prayer. He's faithful in every single season. So that is you please connect with us as we continue to worship. You were there. When my heart was stranded far away from home. When my scars ran deep and I was all alone. When I feel this for you with things that took my soul, you were there. When darkness took a hold of my heart, when the fear gripped my soul and tore it apart, when life became too much and felt too hard, you were there, searching, never giving up on me, knocking at my heart relentlessly, saying, I am here, here to set you free. And I'll sing of all you good.
think you can lift your hands as high as you can. Because that baby's is above every name. Come on, young person. Everybody under the age of 85, lift your hand. Come on. You're the truth. Up the name that is above, 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 above. One more time. Now come on, lift your hands and give him a clap up there where you can. Come on, we're lifting up that name that is above every other name. We're lifting up above every other situation. Come those thousands in Bloemfontein, in Johannesburg, Cape Town, Durban, Roberta. Pray for me. Welcome to Faith TV tonight, Dr. Honor and Jenny. What a great honor to be again live to people all over the world. Welcome to Praise TV. What an honor to speak to you all over India, Pakistan, and Russia. The Facebook Live, YouTube Live, CRC Online radio stations all over the world. We welcome you tonight with us to this live broadcast. Yes, real time, unedited, unpredictable, predictably unpredictable. So you're in the right place, you're in a dangerous place. That means God can do anything at any time. He's going to get a hold of you through this camera. He's going to touch you. So you better get ready tonight. Welcome to Russia. Welcome to Israel, America, Europe. India, Pakistan, China, and of course, beautiful Africa. Come on, if you're from Africa and you love Africa, praise the Lord. We are going to be African proud. I said to somebody in the gym the other day, I don't think he, he liked it so much, but I said to him, um, I mean, he's a religious person, uh, you know, religious, okay? I said, stop calling me white. I'm not white, I'm pink. And I mean, the, the air conditioning wasn't working. And he said, no, you're not, you're not pink. He says, you're white. I said, no, I'm not white. I said, look again. <laughs> you know, my name is Adam, and Adam means red, it means red dust. So I'm sorry. I wasn't made from white dust. So um, we don't celebrate skin pigmentation in CRC. We celebrate who God created us to be. Amen. So I know I'm going to upset you at the start, but that's okay. That's me. You know me by now. So he said to me, you, you're a white, I'm a non-white. So I said, why, am I, why are you not black and I'm a non-black? Okay, take your seats in heavenly places. Be happy. Uh, look alive. Amen. I'm not defined by my skin color in any case, and I'm not defined by your skin color. I'm defined by the Word of God, by the promises of God. Come on, young people. Look alive. Look happy and be excited because the future belongs to you. Say amen tonight. Welcome to all the churches. There are so many um, all over South Africa. I love you all. Next year is going to be great. It's going to be fantastic. So I want to continue to speak to those who are interested in having an amazing 2022. Okay, for the rest of you, you'll be ready for 2022 by the time I'm finished tonight. And my message very simply, how high you will jump is up to you. Well, that was enough just to come to church. I can now say bye and go watch the IPL. No, it's not IPL, the other cricket. Any case. So we all know this, but just a little illustration, please. When put in a jar, are trained to jump a certain height. Fleas jump, so they will jump and hit the top over and over again. As you watch them jump and hit the top, you will notice something interesting. Same thing happens to human beings. The fleas continue to jump, but they are no longer jumping high enough to hit the top. Then, and it's a matter of record, you can take the top off, and though the fleas continue to jump, they won't jump out of the jar. 
I repeat, they won't jump out of their past, their hurt, their pain, their yesterday. Whatever defined them, the limitations placed upon them. Because they can't or they won't. They've been conditioned. The reason is simple. They've been conditioned. They themselves have conditioned themselves to jump just this high. I mean, how many times have you been told what you can't do? How many times have you been told it's not meant for you? And even in, your, in the education systems designed by men, and we should all have an education, somehow people evaluate us and they tell us who we are and we live with those labels for the rest of our lives. I can only jump so high. So people get mad when I preach a gospel that says you can be who God created you to be. You can be the head, you don't have to be the tail. You can rise to the top, you don't have to settle for the bottom. You are created in God's image. You are somebody extraordinary with extraordinary potential. You just have to realize it. I mean, what kept Gideon in the wine press is he was conditioned by his environment, by his family, by his relatives, by other people, believing that he was the least and the weakest. So he did not do anything for God. But Daniel 11:32, the Bible says, But the people who know God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. Oh, come on. If you are ready for great exploits in 2022, jump out of your seat and give God a radical praise in Jesus' name. Many times people do the same. They restrict themselves and never reach their potential. As Rick Godwin also says, the grave is the place with the most unfulfilled potential. Live full and die empty. I want to go beyond that. You should live full and you should die with dreams unfulfilled in Jesus' name, generationally. Just like the fleas, they fail to jump higher, thinking they are doing all that they can do. 2022 is going to be an amazing year for those of you who choose. And notice I said, choose to be different, to be the standout person, to be the problem solver, to be the solution finder, to be the extraordinary person in your environment, the person who dares to jump out of the jaw, the person who dares to climb out of the boat, that person who dares to believe that I can do the impossible, that people say, because the Bible says in Mark 9:23 that if you can believe all things are possible, if you can believe. It doesn't matter what God says about you. It matters what you say about yourself. So people have been conditioned. I pastored a little church in Lady Brand for the first five years um, of my pastoral uh, ministry. And there were people, when they went on holiday, they traveled as far as Fixburg. That was their holiday. That was their world. That's a big world, 70 kilometers. <laughs> hey, believe that I love you. We started there. But back in the day, <laughs> people would travel as far as Marcel Spurt. Oops. Or they would travel as far as a caravan park next to Bloom Sprite. That was it. Nobody went any further because they were conditioned. This is who we are. This is what we can expect. This is the kind of holiday that we can afford. Amen. I mean, I was shocked when I found, and I do understand our historical background, but I'm not even talking about people that were oppressed by apartheid. I'm talking about people that actually owned cars and people who could actually go to the sea. But they would never be venture beyond their comfort zones. Comfort is not your friend. Average is not your friend. Good is not your friend. You know, when a girl says, that's a good guy, you better be get worried because you're not the guy she's going to marry, okay? She wants a great guy. She doesn't want the good guy. Some guys are just too nice. You ain't getting the right wife, okay? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> 
The girls know what I'm talking about. They all act like, what is he saying? He's speaking Spanish right now. No, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You don't like nice. <laughs> okay, let me leave it. Let me just go, yeah. So, people have been so conditioned to think less of themselves and to think below themselves. I mean, I always stop people when people do down talk. It's something I don't like and appreciate when people tell me who they're not, what they can't do. And they belittle themselves and they talk down on themselves as if they're doing who a favor. Remember, as a man thinketh, so is he. What you think about you, you will project to others. You decide how people see you. You make up your mind how people evaluate you. Nobody has the right to evaluate you. So when you go for that job interview, you better dress up and you better show up and you better be better in your attitude and more excellent in your dress and more prepared and your smile, even if you have to fake it, your smile better look real and better look bigger in Jesus' name. Nobody appreciates somebody with life owes me something. Nobody appreciates this generation on planet Earth that is called entitlement. I don't care what socialism says. I don't care what the people are trying to accomplish beyond and behind this COVID to turn our world into a socialistic place where we're all equal and level. Let me tell you something. We're equal in God and we all come out of a womb and we don't all have the same upbringing. We don't all have the same start in life. But when you discover God, you discover yourself and you can make up the ground. You can make up the difference. You can run past people that had a head start before you if you choose to leave your past behind and you believe what God says about you. The Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. Think about Gideon for one moment. How long did he sit in the wine press? We don't know. He was filled with cynicism, doubt, unbelief. He was defined by his environment. He was defined by his family, like David, by people's opinions. But what did he do? He believed God. The Lord said, the Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. And then Gideon said, oh, if the Lord is with me, why this, why that? Why was I born in this culture? Why did I grow up an orphan? Why, 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 why? God never even entertained the conversation. All God said was, go in this might of yours and go save Israel. I created you. Jeremiah, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I called you, I anointed you, I ordained you, a prophet to the nations. I purposed you to be alive in 20, 22, 23, 24, 25. So your past does not matter. Your culture does not matter. Your failure does not matter. Your yesterday does not matter. People's opinions does not, do not matter. What matters is what God says about you. And my Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. He is a recreated being. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Oh, come on, it's time to feel a little bit good about yourself. Stand on your feet and give the Lord a little bit of a praise to all or anything. Just look alive and look like you're ready for the future in the name of Jesus. How many we taught all the time to feel bad about ourselves? And people offer promotions based on condition. And often people have to lose themselves to get ahead. And they have to compromise to get ahead. Or they have to take a bribe to get ahead, or they have to find a sugar daddy to get through university. It's not what my Bible says, and I'm going to talk about that tonight. You be you, and you fall in love with you, not to the place of narcissism. You love yourself, and you respect yourself. The greatest gift you can give yourself is self-respect, and no person in the world has the right to take away your self-respect. No boyfriend, no girlfriend, no man, no boss, nobody else has the right to take away your, no husband, no wife has the right to take away your self-respect. No parent, no teacher has the right to take away your self-respect, which should be rooted in Christ. Because the minute you lose yourself, you're in trouble, my brother. The minute you have to dress low and behold to get the contracts, you've lost yourself, my sister. Yeah, I, I, I was pastoring in Blumenau and, and somebody from the church in Pretoria came to visit me. Pure lady, pure. But she came and she dressed in one of those lo and behold dresses. I said, what's up? She says, oh, pastor, you know, you want men to sign the contract. 
<laughs> your power with grace. Really? Huh? You're selling yourself or you're selling the contract? You're selling yourself or are you good enough to get the contract? Hello? Hello? So I just called power dressing. <laughs> I say no sun dressing. <laughs> uh, 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 <ooh. laughs> I mean, people only see you as a body. It's not a good thing. And if people can't see you for who you are, you. They can't look beyond the outer. Because God doesn't even look at the outer. God is, he doesn't even treat you according to the outer. The minute you allow people to exploit the outer, they control you. They own you. They manipulate you. And they will limit you from your destiny because you have lost yourself. Hmm. I'm talking to your friend. <laughs> I mean, this is, uh, I know this might sound very unkind, but my PAs are very good. When somebody comes from counseling, they say, okay, now, before you see the pastor, just cover up quickly, please. <laughs> Um, back to the sermon. <laughs> it's a word for someone. It's a word for someone. It's a word for someone. When God takes you somewhere, no one can, can, can take it from you. <clears throat> oh, come on, give him a praise. Amen. So there are those... You know, with, in spite of every recession, in spite of every difficulty as we've had with this COVID pandemic, there are always people who make money and people, even in our church, many people that I've spoken to, they're doing better business than ever. And they all have one common factor, it's attitude. Positive. They seek opportunities. They're optimistic. They don't speak negative about everything else that's forced down their throats. They're resilient. When they lose, they do not accept their losses as final. They rise up. They actually listen to the word of restoration like uh, David at Ziklag. They strengthened himself, inquired of God, never played the victim game, never played the entitlement game, never played any other game. If it's meant for good by God for you, you'll do it. You're not too white. You're not too black. You're not too colored. I don't care what the policies are. If God meant it for you, you're going to get the job because God's going to give you the favor in that company where people say, you're an old white male, you cannot get a job, or you're a female, you cannot get a job. Well, honey, you are going to be the first lady that's going to get that job as an advocate in that company. You're going to be the first person to get that job as a professor. God's going to mess up that whole environment, that whole system to promote you if you pursue Him and you don't lose yourself. So, the world is filled with so many opportunities right now, but many people only see obstacles because they've been conditioned to see obstacles. You talk to some people, there's not a negative word or a positive word that comes out of their mouths. You talk to some people, you see their number on your cell phone, you think, oh no, this is half an hour. I'm going to need a vacation in Hawaii after this conversation because the energy is so negative. You know what I'm talking about? No, you don't because you're one of them. <laughs> okay, that's just uh, uh, the truth. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so we've been conditioned. All of, not all of us, but people are conditioned to be average. It's amazing how people, when you, when, you, when you tell people, God doesn't want you average, how people fight for the right to be average. Beige, bland, boring. 
just like everybody else. God never created you to be average. God never created you to be at the bottom. God is no respecter of persons. God doesn't decide, I'm blessing this one and I'm not blessing that. As a matter of fact, the Bible is very clear that God's blessed us all. So when we stand at the cross, the ground is level. We all have the same opportunity. Not the same past, but the same grace, the same mercy, the same forgiveness, the same Word of God. And we all have a sovereign gift which is called choice where God says I call heaven and earth as a witness against you this day that I've set before you life and death blessing and cursing choose life that you and your descendants may live so you choose your future through accepting what Jesus already did for you 2,000 years ago he did it the Bible calls you complete the Bible calls you the head the Bible calls you justified the Bible calls you sanctified the Bible calls you more than a conqueror the Bible calls you victorious the Bible calls you a victor the Bible calls you to triumph in all circumstances but listen religion will fight people like me to keep people poor as if poverty is a gift from God listen poverty is the greatest curse on planet earth and as South Africans we need to declare war on poverty as the greatest virus in this country we have to eradicate poverty from South Africa and we can if we unite and stand together in Jesus name every man should have a job every woman that wants a job should be have employment every young person should have multiple opportunities in Jesus name come on the wealth is in Africa we have to change our mindset and we have to rebuild Africa rebuild South Africa and make this continent the pride of the world in Jesus name and not allow people to exploit us and rob us and plunder us because we think less of ourselves than we ought to are you listening to me I said to someone I said hey don't look at me like this you think I'm white I'm pink and I, I hop on this because I'm as much African as you are. Get over it, my brother. I don't care how my ancestors got here. This is my land. This is my country. This is my birthright. This is my future. This is where I'm going to build and love all the people of Africa and South Africa. Amen. It's not a white compartment in heaven for white people. As a belief, man. Je gaat niet alleen maar je kaki kleren in een speciale plek zitten in die hemel. Nee, dat betekent niet, je mag je kaki kleren aan. Nee, vooral als je een van die jachters is, wat van die bakkie af jacht. Ga een trek aan jou camo en jacht van die bakkie, want die bok kan je niet op die bakkie zien nie. Ons gaan jacht. Nee, jullie gaan bier. Ach, ik bedoel, jullie gaan... <laughs> Amen. It's just, uh, okay, no, let's leave it. So, people are conditioned to settle for average. Now, the, I understand what the Bible says, having food and raiment there would be content. But contentment is a state of mind. Contentment is not a destination. Paul says, I've had plenty, I've had little, I've learned in whatever state I am to be content. Contentment does not mean you settle for less. Contentment is an attitude. Whether I have or I do not have, I'm content. I'm victorious. My emotions are not up and down based on the state of my bank balance. But don't tell me I live in a squatter camp where there's no electricity after 28 years, thanks to this great government, and I still don't have running water and sewage, etc., etc., and I have to be content. No. No. I'm not going to be content. I'm content as a human being. I'm content as a child of God, but I'm not content with my environment. I'm not content with poverty. I'm not content with potholes. I'm not content with bad service delivery. I want change, and I'm going to be the product of change, and I'm going to be the instigator and the initiator of change in Jesus' name. So don't pacify me with the super spiritual nonsense to say, well, just be content with the hand that life has dealt you. No. 
I'm not content with the hand that life dealt me or the deck of cards. I'm content with what God promised me, which is His Word. Thank you very much. And I'm going to access what God has for me by faith in the grace of Jesus Christ. I'm not going to be a settler. I'm not going to be a hampy camper. I'm going to be a climber. I'm going to be a mover. I'm going to be a shaker. I'm going to be a water walker in the name of Jesus Christ because I have God on the inside of me. And hey, all this God did was to create this universe. And He still is creating the universe. And so can you exercise that creative, creative, creative uh, potential. So there's nothing wrong with starting at average, as people define it, but to settle there? What is average? The top of the bottom, the bottom of the top. I mean, one man's ceiling is another man's floor. One man's ceiling is the basement ceiling. Well, the other guy lives in the penthouse, in the Empire State Building. So you don't determine my ceiling. My culture doesn't determine my ceiling. The government doesn't determine my ceiling, my potential. I have God potential. Did you hear me tonight? I have unlimited potential on the inside of me. I have unrestricted potential on the inside of me. I have to tap into that potential through who I am in Christ. We're talking about your Christ potential, your Christ life, where there's wholeness, where there's completion where you know who you are. That's why the theology where people get confused with skin color is so outside of God's word. Second Corinthians 5 verse 13, Paul says, I regard no one according to the flesh. As a matter of fact, God doesn't even know what the color of your skin is. Sorry. Because the Bible says it doesn't look on the outward appearance. The Bible says it, not me. I don't care what the politician says. I don't care what the company policy says. If God meant for you to be the CEO, you're going to be the CEO. If God meant for you to climb to the top of the ladder, you're going to climb to the top of the ladder. No matter how jealous people are, no matter what your brothers do, no matter what the haters do, no matter what people conspire against you, there's no delay that can cause a denial from God. There's no detour that can stop what God has for you. The only thing that can stop you is you, my brother and my sister, by not believing what God says about you and by not being everything God called you to be and more. I tell my staff sometimes, and we have over 300 work in our church, um, just in the ministry, I say to them, I believe in you. That's why I employed you. Do you believe in you? Doesn't help I believe in you more than you believe in you. Doesn't help I see all this potential and you just see this. So how does God see you? God doesn't see you limited. God doesn't see you as a little worm. Somebody that just is, is, is second hand. No. Bible says you hail from God. You were born not by the will of man, but by the will of God. You were predestined by God. You are His workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus for good works. That's what the Bible says. So what do you believe? You believe what the environment has told you? You conform to the world. And the Bible very clearly in Romans 12 verse 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, perfect, acceptable will of God for your life. Because everybody has an opinion. But you better get the right opinion. You better get God's opinion. Because until your mind doesn't change, your life is not going to change. Until you don't change your mind about you, nobody else will change their mind about you. So you have to become that original. You have to become that woman that God created you to be. No matter what you've been through. Love yourself enough, man. I mean, woman. Love yourself enough. Let go of yesterday. Do not repeat the mistakes of yesterday. Do not let another fool define who you are. You decide, this is who I am. 
You love yourself and the rest will be history. So average, listen, is the enemy of, of, of great. Average is the enemy of excellence. As good is the enemy of great. It's okay if you start good, but good people don't get the job done. You have to be great. I'll say to you again, life does not reward second best. Life does not reward average. I don't care what people tell you. I don't care what the socialist agenda is telling you right now all over the world. Those people at the top that is manipulating and trying to rewrite the history of the world, those who have the power and the influence financially that control the world system, nothing average about those people. They exploit those who are of a weak mind. They exploit governments. They exploit people with their agenda of what? Socialism so that they can have more power. Nothing average about those people, but they want the rest of us to be average. They want the rest of us just to settle for second best. They want the rest of us to believe we are just nobodies. We all deserve the same. No, we don't. Not even God says we deserve the same. The one that works harder is the one that's going to get further. The one who solves the problems is the one that's going to get ahead in life. The one that sees the opportunity is the one that's going to head in life. Nowhere in the Bible does God reward people for sitting on their fat, lazy, blessed, behind assurances and doing nothing and just shout, gimme, 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 gimme. Hey, your name isn't Jimmy. You better get up, get over your past and become the man, the woman that God called you to be and take the future that God has for you with both hands in Jesus' name. I mean, God never sent a political leader. Send a savior to do what? To save you from yourself. First, sin. Secondly, all the things you've been through. That has conformed you into who you are today. That's why when you study the epistles, the number one thing Paul addresses again and again and again and again and again and again is what? Identity rooted in grace. Identity. How to walk in identity, renewing your mind, being filled with the Holy Ghost. You can't be listening to Radio Drive and just what watch Channel O, MTV, whatever it is, and listen to all that garbage and think you're going to have a great mind because what you sow to your mind will determine your thoughts. Oh, that's a weak hand clap because you think you're going to have great lives and you can just put junk in your mind and you think everything's going to be okay. Everything's not going to be okay. You better listen to me. You're not going to have a great harvest if you plant weed and you plant everything uh, and whatever. No, you pluck out the weeds, right? You tend the good seed, the Word of God. I haven't started. Tell them on TV. <laughs> I'll say it again. Average is the enemy of excellence. You know, people walk in our church and they don't even see the excellence. <laughs> and they forget the time when we sang, you, you won't even know what I'm talking about, young people. Like, you don't know what a record player is. You don't know nothing. Because you so push a button and you access Google and the whole world and you become lazy. But back then, we had a transparency machine. Remember that? Huh? And you had the lady there that, and it was always the fat lady. No, I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm sorry, I'll rephrase that. Forgive me, Jesus. It was always the lady who, who didn't, couldn't keep a beat. And she could never put that transparent, look, it drove me nuts, because I'm, I'm excellent. I just don't like a mess. So I, I think God also doesn't like a mess. We'll talk about that now when the TV's gone. So they would always put that transparency skew. Dunstan said, ah, and she's lost in herself. And I'm thinking, can't you see? I can't worship God. There's no excellence here. No, but it's just like, hey, Liev, hey, Liev, hey, Liev, it ain't my heart. Yes, it's Liev and me. And hey, by the way, my first band, believe it or not, 
was a person on a piano accordion. Piano accordion. Me, musician. I played in the Free State Youth Symphony Orchestra. Saxophone. Musician. You don't have to clap hands for me, I'm just telling you. That's why you see me get agitated sometimes when sound isn't right, etc. Because things for me just have to be perfect. The, you just hear nature and everything is perfect. Harmonious except the hardy da. Further on, everything else is just blend. Everything blends. There's no, there's, there's just, just, just nothing that's wrong. All the colors. You wake up, sunset. You look at a flower. Everything in nature testifies of excellence, who God is. We see this every day. And then our rooms are cluttered. Our cars are dirty. We look like we climbed out of a washing basket and we go for a job interview and because we think we have an entitlement mentality, we should get the job. No, no, no. You're not even getting past the security gate next time. Thank you very much. I don't want that close to me in Jesus' name because you're not representing who God is. And if you're going to build a great company, you better employ great people. You better employ people with potential. You better employ people who has the hunger to grow and to better themselves and to improve themselves in the name of Jesus Christ. Otherwise, people will take you to their level as we've seen in municipalities all over South Africa. You're going to take anything to the level of who you are. So if you take a mess and you're excellent, you're going to take it to a place of excellence. If you're a mess and you're placed in a place of excellence, you're going to mess the place up. Not rocket science. Because Matthew 12 says, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart produces good things. You produce your world through what God has placed within you. Otherwise, we can all play the victim game. I'm a male. I'm a feeling. I'm white. I'm black. I don't have any education. Blah, 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 blah. Hey, God loves you. I'm sorry you have to go, but I suggest if you live close to one of our churches, come join us, and you'll hear the whole sermon in Jesus' name. You're valuable, you're precious, but this is time to get real. Real with God, real with yourself. Um, you know, we're not just here and we float, and, and one prayer changes everything. I'm all for prayer, and I pray, but we have to be who God created called us to be. And only when we become who God called us to be, we live the destiny God has for us. He's not going to do everything. He already did. He sent Jesus. And if you've never given your life to Jesus, give your life to Him. If you've wandered away from Him, wander back to Him. He loves you. He cared, cares for you. He died for you 2,000 years ago. Now it's easy. There where you are tonight, you can just give yourself to Him. It's as easy as that. I love you. May God bless you. Reach out to us in Jesus' name. Bye-bye. Amen. So uh, let me talk to the one or two people that are going to change the world. I sometimes think that's why I take time, because I sat in big conferences. Everybody clapped. Nobody changed. I was the one who listened, and I was the one who changed. I don't say it arrogantly. I was the one, when I saw excellence, I brought it into my world. I changed my, whatever I did. You can't come here and be exposed to this and go back to your world, and your world is a mess. The reason we do what we do is to give you a picture. I could also build a little shed with three little bulbs. And you would act maybe as you are now. Some people cannot identify excellence, do not respect excellence, and are attracted to excellence. They intimidate it. Some people are intimidated by those who do better than them. And I've always wondered. I've looked at people. I've traveled the whole world. If I heard there was a move of God, I would climb on a plane, economy class, and go sit in Rome for 21 hours. Those years you could fly on um, 
well, Air Italia. Thank God for Italy. Amen. But then there was the smoker section, which I hate as an ex-smoker. Um, and, you know, um, you sit there and you tolerate it to go catch something. Smart people catch. Smart people see something and they catch it and they become it. They don't sit there opinionated. When they're exposed to something better, they don't get intimidated. They get inspired. I mean, I was pastoring a little church of 17, Lady Brand, and I sat in Rhema right at the back after standing for over an hour in a queue to just get into the building. I sat right at the back. And uh, if you know anything about me, I don't like queues, okay? I don't. I'm going to stand in a queue. Enough of it in the army. And I don't think I have to stand in a queue when I get to heaven. So I stood in a queue. And then Christians can be the rudest people ever because I was standing in the front. And then by the time the doors open, you're at the back. They push you, shove you, and I got the, the seat right at the back. But that's okay. All those who ran for the front seats caught nothing. I didn't say now the people sitting in the front are catching nothing. I was sitting in the back, 1985, and I said, one day, I'm going to do this. Not arrogantly, I just knew it. I, I observed, I looked, I captured my mind, my heart, and I was sitting in a little place called Lady Brand. Do you even know where that is? I was standing in a queue in a conference once and this fellow in front of me, I'll call him a fellow out of respect. He looks at me and says, So brother, brother, where are you from? I say Lady Brand. He says, Oh, where's Lady Brand? I'm like, who did the dog bring you? Now? Where's he? Enough said. His church is this small. But he had all the fancies. The fancy shoes, the fancy clothes, the fancy charismatic. Just say the right thing and praise God. Hallelujah. No, I was smarter. I would listen to the speaker intently. I would write down whatever somebody said that I knew was a defining moment. And I would make it mine. And it would change me. It would become building blocks in my life. I was smart enough to take what God was saying through that person that God was using. And I was always attracted to somebody ahead of me, not intimidated. Now there's people with churches, every school, all 20 people, 30 people, but they'll never put their foot in a larger church or in a, in a, in a conference because they know it all. If, if you want to go somewhere in life, find somebody that are light years ahead of you. Did you get that? If you want to go somewhere in life, go find somebody that's much bigger than you, much better than you, more excellent than you, that, are, that have done things that you have not even thought about, and go study that person's life and go learn from that person if you're half smart so that you can also get somewhere in life. Amen? It's fine to say we observe God, but God uses people. Mm -hmm. You follow a crazy somebody, you're going to be as crazy as that person. Some of you are more passionate about your, 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 your music singers and the idols out there in the world then you are about Jesus Christ, the Word of God, and true leaders of God that God has raised up. You know everything, you can sing every song, but you cannot quote a Bible verse. The music goes, you sing. You know all the words, but you can't quote a, a, a Bible verse. And, and the Word is your future. The level of the Word determines the condition of your mind. Because only the Word of God has the power to save your soul and to renew your mind. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else. No political constitution. No freedom charter. Nothing changes your mind. It's one thing. It's the Word of God. So immediately when you look at your time in the Word, meditation, reading, 
It shows how serious you are about your future. Because you don't just change this by somebody laying hands on you. I mean, if God gave us the power, we could cast people's minds out, right? And get them a new mind. But He never gave us the power. He gave you the power to transform your mind or renew your mind. You renew you. You improve you. You better you. Not through mere motivational talking. Because motivational speakers will not sustain you. The only thing that will sustain you and the only power, the only instrument that has the power to reconstruct your paradigms, your thinking patterns, the grooves in your brain that are formed scientifically through repetitive thinking. The only thing that can change that and rebuild that is the Word of God. Nothing else can. Nothing else can. Not a prophet blowing on you. Not a prophet throwing a handkerchief on you. I do it as well. I'll blow on you. I'll spit on you. I'll fall on you. I'll stand on you. I'll do whatever it takes to get you to change. But you ain't changing, my dear brother, until you've renewed your mind. Until you've changed your mind, you're not changing your life. You're not changing your future. You're not changing your tomorrow. You're going to go back to the same place. You're going to go back to the same place, Africa. I mean, Africa is a wonderful place. We have some of the greatest leaders in the world when it comes to the power of God, and yet the poverty is, is, is the highest in the world. Why? I was preaching in a conference. A great friend of mine has got the biggest church in the country, influential, and it was just miracles, 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 and I'm all for miracles, okay? And... Um, but you don't live by miracles. And then I just realized, if people don't change their minds, the miracles, you're going to stay poor. Hello. Dumela. Quinon. If you don't change, you will be exactly where you are right now until you change. No matter what conference you attend, no matter how much corporate time you do. So when the anointing of God comes upon you and, you and you spend time in the presence of God, it's for God really to get your attention, right? It's for God to, to change your heart. But you don't just need a heart change to live life that God has for you. You need a mind change. You need your thinking patterns reconstructed because you live out of your soul. You live out of your soul. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in the Hebrews, the only thing that can discern between your thoughts, your soul and your spirit is the Word of God, which is that's where the heart is, the seat of man. It's where your spirit and your soul comes together. Your soul being your intellect, your will, your emotions. You live out of that. You don't just live out of your spirit. So you get saved in your spirit, and the Word of God is food. 1 Peter 2, verse 2, is newborn babies desire this and sincere milk of the Word that you may grow thereby. Matthew 4, 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That is for your spirit man, right? You have to eat. Spirit of man, Proverbs says, sustains him in the time of infirmity, calamity, sickness. So you have to have a strong spirit. But you cannot just have a strong spirit and have an unrenewed mind. There's a lot of people like that. They're very anointed, but their minds are unrenewed. Their minds are unrenewed. They're anointed because the anointing of God is the gift of God that comes upon you for the benefit of others. Listen, that anointing does not change you. What changes you is the Word of God, nothing else. That means meditation, which means to ponder, to reflect, to utter, speak, mutter, to repetitively say to yourself, you have to reconstruct your thinking patterns until you believe what the Word of God says, until your thoughts can be lined with the Word. Because you can say the right thing. I had a parrot. I told the parrot to say certain things, but you know what? The parrot could only 
be a parrot. So people are living like turkeys, and God's called you to be an eagle. And you are born again. You are saved. You have an anointing. The gifts of the Spirit operate through you. But that's not the dimension you live in. You have to deal with your soul dimension as well. You have to get your mind renewed. You have to get your thinking patterns renewed. You have to begin to think the Word of God, and the Word of God has to be your reality. That means you have to shut other influences, and you have to turn up the volume of the Word of God, the music you listen to, the music you listen to, the programs you watch, etc., 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 etc. You have to almost give your mind an overdose. Flood your mind for your mind to change. Are you, are you listening to me? Huh? Are you ready for more or should I close? It's 10 past 7. I'll go till 11 past 7 tomorrow morning. Well, I'm not doing this for me, by the way. Do you even realize that? Mm -hmm. Sitting up there watching your clock. Bye-bye. Get up now and go. <laughs> okay, here we go. So as God's children, we are called to do what? To imitate God. In business, as a city manager, <laughs> I get myself in trouble. If God was the city manager, would there be one pothole? Do you think when you get to heaven, there are potholes? Hmm. Do you think when you get to heaven, there's anything that's falling apart. The window panes of the New Jerusalem are broken. The ceiling is falling out. Weeds are growing through the, <laughs> through the roads of gold. <laughs> Do you think that's what Jerusalem, the New Jerusalem looks like? Chaos? <laughs> so, excellence, listen, has nothing to do with culture. Excellence has everything to do with self-respect. Excellence has nothing to do with culture. Excellence has everything to do with self-respect. So let's talk about self-respect, and then we have to talk about your private life, your appearance. When last did you bath? You can't put doom over the sweat <laughs> and doom upon doom like young people do. They come back from the gym and they don't shower, then they just go put doom on. And then they take the girl out. Sis, man, sis, sis. Gaan bad yourself, as a belief. Borsel jou tanne, maak jou oor skoon. Dan kan jy oor. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Personal hygiene. Amen. Amen. Listen. Listen, I did mission work in Botswana, so don't, don't, you don't have to give me that. For th I, I was there for three months, and I had, I, we stayed in a little tents in uh, Matopi, Makalamabedi, Kumaha, Rakops, up in the Okavanga Delta, etc., etc., and I lived in a little, a little tent. But I bathed every night. You say, how? I had my bucket, and I got water out of the river, risked the crocodile, and I, and I stood in the bucket and gooi seep, kijk jy so, want ek lyk nie feil nie, ok? En ek in myself gewas en gewas en gewas en gewas en gewas en gewas en gewas. But you don't need a shower to be clean. You need self-respect. Amen? You just need enough self-respect to be clean. You can, if you've got two shirts, you can wash the two shirts. And not be like the Europeans that when they serve you, you can smell sweat upon sweat upon sweat upon sweat. When those waiters come, you lose your appetite. So excellence, before we can even talk about excellence in our business, excellence in our companies, 
we have to talk about personal excellence, personal appearance, being the best you. Loving yourself to be the best you. Because you become you or your reflection in your world. As creation is a what? Reflection of God. Creation is a reflection of God. Your world is your reflection. Your bed that you've not made up this whole weekend. You know, I also had a teenager. My kids are grown up now. At one stage, because boys are just not, and Davy, I love you. You know, you're, you're a great guy now. But, <laughs> I mean, there was a stage that David just, we take his clothes off, drop it everywhere. Eventually, I said to the lady, you don't pick up his clothes. Cl clean around his clothes. If he can't take his clothes and throw them in the washing basket, you leave it. I told, I told my son-in-laws as well. I said, my daughters are not your slaves. And I told my daughters, you don't pick up their washing. You don't. They take their sweaty gym clothes off and they throw it there. Sisa, yucky, yucky, yucky. Go hang it so it can get dry. Don't throw that stinky stuff in a washing basket. Just have some common sense and just let the sweat dry before you, you throw it. But don't you throw it there and your wife has to come and pick up your stink uh, socks. Let me just say it like there. And, and you think it's okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. Get some self-respect and get some respect for your young wife in the name of Jesus Christ. Right? So I said, when he can't find his bed in his room anymore, he's going to take care of his clothes. He's going to find the washing basket eventually. Hmm? Self-respect. I can't even go beyond this because it doesn't matter we talk about trying to build everything and change everything, but you go back to your car now and there's still hamburger papers of last Sunday in your car. What the heck? You're praying for God to give you a job. Huh? No shall buy still. You think you can separate yourself from your career? You can separate yourself, you, because you take you. You marry somebody. You take yourself into the marriage. You take yourself into a business. So, so if, if, if you're not you in Him, as I said earlier, people will exploit it. People will read your vulnerability. People will see your weakness. People will exploit it. And then apart from that, when you get employed by a company and you have no discipline, self-respect, you're going to bring your chaos into that company, and I don't allow it in my world, my little world. I don't. Don't tolerate staff. And I've told them, my staff, no, you don't come and bring your chaos into my world. You don't bring your problem mindset into my world. I implore you to be a problem solver. I implore you to be an addition. I implore you to change the scoreboard. I don't implore you to pay you a salary. I implore you to do what nobody else can do and to do it better than anybody else can do if, you, if they were employed in your place. Can you say amen tonight? Come on, you know what I'm saying is the truth. Why do you think some people, I have to close now, okay? Why do you, I don't have to, but I want to. How many people, why do you think some people are headhunted all the time and other people get no job offer? Qualified the same, their CVs are out there. But you know, people talk about you out there. You, you're not just talking about me. There are people talking about you. So there are some people that are headhunted. Not because of their skin color. 
But because when they were employed in a company, they brought such a difference in junior management, middle management, senior management, executive, that people started speaking about them. Now people said, I want somebody like that. So what do they do? They make an offer. They hunt you, head hunt you. They buy you. They make you a better offer. Why? Because you're better than everybody else. You're a cut above. You're a notch above. You're excellent. You're above average. You're a problem solver. People hear about it and they say, that's the kind of person I need in my company. That's the kind of person we need in our business. Come on, those of you that employ people. I know that most of you are young people, but you better get this. Because people talk about you. People say, don't ever employ that person. That lady's got the worst attitude ever. She's always sulky and morbid, and she brings a, a, a depressed uh, a, 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 a spirit into the workplace. Nobody wants that. As employers, we want to get rid of that. Yes. Even if you're the, the tea lady. You will, your, your attitude, serving that tea with the greatest attitude will eventually get you a, a junior post in that, that company. Then they will send you on courses because of your attitude. No quick, no miracle, no go from tea gold to directorship. No, it's a journey. And as you improve yourself little by little, as you grow, as you enlarge yourself, you enlarge your treasure, you become a better individual, a more confident individual, and you let go of all your victim-mindedness or mindsets or entitlement, and you just become the standout person, then people will say, that's the go-to person, that's the go-to person. Let's get that person a promotion in Jesus' name. I mean, I came to Pretoria, I had a lady work in my house, a little place I lived in, and, um, she, she worked there, and I thought, no, 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 no. She, this lady's got hopelessly too much potential. And she was brilliant at what she did. But I said, no, she's got too much potential. So we put her on an admin course, and now she works in the church in, an, in, in, in administration. Brilliant attitude, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Because I could see that she's way, you know, I'm not saying anything is inferior. I mean, the guy that kept my garden. My garden never looked as good as this when he kept my garden. But I could see this guy has so much in him. He's always reading the Bible. He's excellent. He works as fast as three other people, etc. So what did I do? Ha! Ah, he's now one of the pastors in our church from being a gardener. He's now one of our pastors with one of the fastest growing zones in our church. Hallelujah. Because he wasn't walking around there and saying, I'm defined by my job. He gave dignity to the job because he never lost his self-respect. And I knew I'm losing a good person in my garden, but I knew that God had something much better for him. God wanted to take him places. And one day he's gonna have his own church. Listen to me now. He's gonna have his own church and he's gonna have a great, great, great church of thousands and thousands of people. Listen to me, he's here tonight. You're gonna see it. And I'm gonna tell you that day when that happens. And he started as my gardener replacing the previous gardener that frustrated me beyond what is reasonable. I always believe you never have to give anybody the same instruction twice. If you have to give anybody the same instruction, instruction twice, they're not a good employee. If you have to repeat an instruction. Hmm. So if, if you're employed and you are given an instruction, you know this because you've gone on a million training courses. Then you say, sir, am I understanding you correct? And you repeat the instruction. So that you don't later, because of your own laziness, say, oh, I thought you meant this. I know you just want revival. Shondai, Hyundai. But hey, 
And I am going to do that because I'm going to be the first one to shunda and hunda and run around the building, etc. But at least I still have a brain and I understand that the Shandai Hyundai is to empower me to use my brain and to apply myself and to be the best me that I possibly can be, to use my gifts, my talents, my ability, and to build something, listen, that will be for the glory of God, which means excellence. Excellence. For years and years and years, people looked at the church and people said, Ach, Nehemiah. The church is just like the lowest. And that's not what God wants. God wants the church to be elevated. That means you. You should be the employee of the year. You should take the price for the attitude. You should take the price for the new employee of the year. You should be the one that the directors talk about in your absence and say three years from now, we are going to promote that person. We're going to fast track that person, etc., etc. That is the attitude that the Bible requires from us. That is what God rewards. Not the young man that sleeps in bed till 10 o'clock in the morning and just think one day things are going to happen. No, it ain't. Not until you change your clock from 10 o'clock to 5 o'clock. You get some self-discipline. You make up your own bed. Get some self-respect. Go do something. I mean, work is not a curse, young people. Before, before God gave Adam a wife, He gave him a job. He gave him a career. Six days a week. Six days a week. Today people just want time off, time off, time off, time off. They had to work six. Well, Adam, without sin, I mean, people think work is part of the curse. No! Adam was created to work. Then God gave him a wife. So don't marry a guy that doesn't have a job. I know some of you young guys, you say that you have to say that. Yes, I just said it because your cool nonsense is, is just not working. And one day that girl is going to wake up and think, enough of your bulldust. Enough. Enough of your smooth operator. Enough of that. Enough. Enough. If he's not going somewhere when he's 25, he's not going to go anywhere when he's 35. So, I'm not saying if he's still studying. I know I'm losing some brothers here, but you better wake up, my man. You better wake up. 19 years old, I was a lieutenant fighting a war in Angola. 19, man. 23 years old, I'd already built my first church building in Lady Brand, a beautiful thatched building that's still standing today. 29 years old, I'd built the first uh, church in, in, in Bloemfontein, 4,000 seater, then expanded it now to 6,500 seats, etc., 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 etc. So you're sitting 30 years old and you're still sucking your thumb. Somebody has to tell you the truth. Hmm? I didn't see whatever happened. <laughs> what are you waiting for? I'm going to say it again. I finished school when I was 17. 18, I became a lieutenant in the army. 19, I'm fighting in Angola. 19. A war with real bullets. Overseeing a platoon. 40 lives. 19. Hmm? 
And we want to sit here and act irresponsible as young people and be slow to grow up and wait for what? What are you waiting for? So maybe there's one young person that wakes up tonight. I pray to God you are. Because I was that young person. But somewhere I woke up. I got it. I got it. I want every head bowed, every eye closed. No one moving, please. No one. I don't say this to be mean tonight. I say this because I care about you. I love you. And I've lived life long enough. I'm not old, but I've had a few summers and winters. And I know what it takes to get anywhere in life. Believe me. I know. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to promise you the road is easy and there's no challenges. It's just not what Jesus promised. I'm going to promise you if you have one miracle, you're not going to still have to change your mind. No. The greatest thing you can do is to take a step in the right direction. And that's to meet Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And that happened to me 39 years today ago on a Sunday morning. Walking to a little building, maybe 70, 80 people there with a hangover after the previous night. Still smelling like the previous night. Doesn't matter because God didn't smell me. God loved me and He saved me radically. Radically. And I want to tell you tonight that God loves you. I don't preach this to criticize you. I preach this to inspire you to be everything God called you to be. But you cannot be everything God called you to be until you meet your Creator, until you meet Jesus Christ. And some of you maybe have lost yourself among your friends. Peer pressure, whatever the pressure is, you are too valuable, too important to lose yourself in the midst of everything that is happening in this world. God values you so much that He gave His Son to die for you. Do you value yourself enough to accept what Jesus did for you 2,000 years ago? He's not asking you to change. He's asking you to come, to surrender, to give yourself to Him. That's the first and the greatest step. Then change comes from the inside, the desire, the discipline, the grace. You're sitting in this place tonight. I'm not asking you where you are, what you've done, your mishaps, mess-ups, mistakes. It matters not. What matters is this moment that you are standing before the throne of grace and a God that loves you, that cares for you and about you and your future and that offers you life. You're sitting out tonight there in Bloemfontein, Johannesburg, Kimberley, Vintu, Khabarone, Durban, Cape Town, Ports of Struam, Bethlehem, all over. Many, many, many thousands gathered. You're not here by accident. That means right where you are. God brought you here for a divine encounter. And tonight all you have to do is just surrender everything to Him. Give it all back to Jesus. Put your life back in His hands. Get serious about this walk with God again. Take back what the devil has stolen. And give yourself back to Jesus Christ. Well, people are praying all over this place. Every head bowed, every eye closed. No one moving. You say, Pastor, that's me. I need a fresh start, a new beginning with God. I want to get right with God. I want to surrender all to Jesus. If that is your desire, wherever you are, whoever you are, quietly, I want to pray for you. If that's you tonight, just slip your hand up. I want to say a prayer for you before we close this meeting. Raise it up all over this place. Raise it up. Up, 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 up. Thank you. God bless you, bless you, bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, He loves you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you, bless you. Many of you. He doesn't judge you. He gives you life, man. Amen up there. Many young people. God bless you, bless you. I've said this many times. I sat in that building on the 14th of November, 1982 when I was seven years old. <laughs> and my two friends sat there. And they also had the opportunity. They never gave their lives to Jesus. Their lives turned out a mess. Somebody invited you here tonight to one of the churches. 
This is your moment. It's not by chance. So before I pray, you say include me in that prayer. I want to surrender all to Jesus. Then just raise your hand quickly. Now, in Jesus' name, slip it up, slip it up. Thank you, thank you. God bless you, thank you, thank you. God bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. Listen, look at me please, everyone. That's all of you. God loves you. God loves you. There's one thing we can't doubt is the love that God has for us. There's another thing we can't doubt is God's ability to put us back together again. And we need it, all of us. That's what grace does. That's what Jesus came to do. Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. To heal you, deliver you, set you free. Only He can do that. So many of you raised your hands. I'm going to pray for you in a moment. But first, please, if you'll be kind to all stand to your feet, please. Except those in wheelchairs, everybody else stand to your feet, please. Just stand with me. Then all over this place, I know it's huge. I want to pray for you. I'd love to pray with you alone. But obviously there's a lot of people here tonight and in all our facilities. So give me the privilege to pray for you. So I'm going to ask you in a moment to leave your seat. Nothing to be afraid of. I've been standing on this platform all night, these beautiful musicians, etc. I need to pray with you at the altar. Maybe you brought a friend. We know that your love for that person will bring that person to Jesus, right? The only thing we can take to heaven is what? People. Our people. Nothing else. Nothing else really matters. But living for Him. So all over this place, if you raised your hand there in Bloemfontein, in all the other churches, I want you right now to take your Bible, your person belongs, whatever you brought to church, so it doesn't disappear. Leave your seat wherever you are. On the balcony, walk that side. There's steps down there. Walk that side, steps down there. If you're in the middle blocks, just come down the aisle closest to you. We're going to pray for you right here at the altar tonight. Come on, don't think about it. This is your response from your heart. You leave your seat and you come tonight. You walk. In the name of Jesus, you come. Come on. Tonight, you follow that voice in your heart tonight. That's God working in you. That is the Holy Ghost. I cannot change you. You come as you are. That is the Holy Ghost. Come on. Walk to that altar tonight. They're in Johannesburg. They're in Bloemfontein. Walk. Come on, young person. This is where your life will change.
those people in Blue Fontaine. Amazing. Listen. You know what's amazing about God's grace is not just our little theologies that we speak. It's actually experiencing the grace of God. And uh, if I think 39 years ago where I was, people don't like to talk about the conversion experience. I don't because of my life. Bound by alcohol, marijuana, mandrax, racism. Yeah. Daar jare was ek ver rechts. So rechts soos jy gekry. I was a hater. You understand? Don't let it offend you. Jesus saved me. That's why I'll smell racism a mile. I'll smell racism a million miles away because I was one. It's not games, these. It's not games. It's not games. Jesus saved you from you. And I thank him every day. God, you know, I thought about that many times. 16 years old, I tried to commit suicide. Just for whatever reason. I was just drunk and I was mad. And I thought, well, that's it. Jump off the building. And I can tell you many stories that I was this close to death. Like this. So when I got saved, I wasn't one of these charismatics that had a glory hallelujah moment. I was in shock. Two weeks, I was in shock, realizing I almost I was dead and how I just made it. Like just. Not made it by a long yard. Just made it. Just. And I think what would have happened if I didn't pass out on the top of that building and I jumped off? Where'd I be? Where'd I be? When a guy put a gun in my belly and pulled the trigger and the gun never went off and then he shot five shots and they all went off at my friend who ran. Where would I be? It's not a game, this. Too many times when I was unsaved, how God protected me, living a riotous life. And I got saved and I was in shock. Shock. That's why I still am passionate about lost people. Because some people don't realize how close they are to eternity. I'm sorry to say it, but there are people listening to me tonight. You will not see the end of next year. I'm not speaking a curse over you. That's reality. That's life. People that you know won't even see the end of this year. And, and, and we're not serious about this? You see, I, I wasn't born in the church and raised in the church, and I wasn't a goody, 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 and I got half saved. I was totally messed up. So when I experienced the love of God, it was like I was in shock. I just made it. And if it wasn't for Jesus, I don't think I'd be alive today. I have to tell you very honestly. There's a lot of things that would not have been okay in my life in every area. I don't think I would be alive. Not my personality. Not my kind of personality. No. He saved me. And every strong man, you that are so powerful and so full of yourself, you need to bow before Jesus Christ. Otherwise, you're going to self-destruct. You're going to destroy yourself. Those of you with radical, living on the edge personalities, exactly the same. You don't have somebody to harness you. You're a disaster waiting to happen. It's not a game. It's not a game. Standing here 20 years old, you've got your whole life ahead of you. And you partially surrendered to Jesus Christ. Good for you, mate. We'll talk 30 years from now. After your three divorces, your mess-ups. What a great honor to pray with all of you. So one thing I know is that Jesus loves you and he takes anybody and makes somebody out of their lives, something out of their lives. Amen. Maak eens ek wat jy gedoen het nie. Maak eens ek wat gister gebeur het nie. Really doesn't matter. 
So I want you tonight, just put your hand on your heart, all of you, please. Just pray this prayer tonight. All over South Africa, pray this right now. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I give myself back to you. I thank you for the love that you have for me. Thank you that you died for my sin. I believe you are the Christ. I believe you rose from the grave. I believe you are alive. Tonight, I surrender my life to you. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for a new beginning and for a fresh start. I receive your love. I receive your forgiveness. I receive my freedom. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Thank God I'm free, forgiven, freely. Yes. And if you walk with Him, He's going to take you into a beautiful future. So please, I know it's late. Give us a moment of your time. Give us a few moments of your time here in Pretoria. We want to put a Bible in your hand if you don't have one. And see how we can help you. Turn to my right. Turn to my right this way. Your left. Here in Pretoria. Turn to my right. 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 And then in Johannesburg, do the same. Turn to my right. In Bloemfontein, all those beautiful people at the altar, turn to my left. You're right. Follow the pastors. Come on, let's give all these young people a big hand clap. This is where your life changes at the altar. Next year, we're going to go big with our harvest. Amen. We're going to have uh, uh, stadium events bigger than ever. Get people saved like never. Amen. I talk to young people all the time. They say the clubs are full, 3,000. Bring your will to church, man. Bring your will to church. Just do what the politicians do. Just bring everybody. Amen. Lift your hands with me tonight. Everybody, just lift this. Lift this and mean it. Say tonight, Father. Say it. Say, Father, I give myself to you, my spirit, my soul, my body. I want to live a life that is well-pleasing unto you. I want to live a life that will bring you glory. Thank you that you promised. You start the work in me. You'll finish it. I'm confident that you will work in me both to will and do your good pleasure. Help me, Father, to be everything that you created me to be. I release myself from my past into your grace, and I thank you that tonight I make up my mind to be a reflection of you, my God, in all I do. Help me to have an excellent spirit. Help me to be a difference maker, help me to change this world for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Come on, it doesn't matter how long you've been in the same place. You can move on. You can move higher. You can be a climber. You can climb the next mountain because that's what God has in mind for you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Great honor to speak to you. Take your seat. And uh, as we get ready to give the offering, um, we love to give because we love to give, right? Amen. So if you didn't bring your offering, then borrow from the person next to you and tell them I'll pay you back in the millennium. <laughs> God bless you while we listen to an anointed item. Surrounded by the enemy, and it feels like hope is far beyond my reach. I know the battle, I know the battle, I know the battle. The battle is yours. I know the battle. The battle is yours, it's always yours. It's always yours, God. Oh, 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 oh. 
free that they should rage against me. And the storm it pours its wrath upon my head. There's a name that should to save is never failing. Jesus, my salvation and my close our eyes. Father, we thank you that come this week we will make a difference because it's all about your purpose. Lord, we ask you that you'll show us who we need to reach out to, who we need to show the love that you've given to us. As we make a difference, we will see their lives never be the same again. We bless you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people says amen. amen. Family, would you be so kind? For all of these ashes you give Joy in the morning rebuilt me, and I've fallen to the ground. You give me praises instead of despair, oh 